All right, everyone. Hello and welcome back. So today we are going on over an ex uh, another example over <laughs> shear force and bending moment diagrams. All right. So without further ado, uh, this one's going to be a bit different um, because it is uh, a beam with a slope. Right. So how exactly do we do it? Well, let's find out. All right. So nothing was really changing with these problems, but let's just get in right into it. All right. First thing we do, find reactions. All right. So that's um, so. But the trickiest part of this is that we want since since shear is always kind of perpendicular to the beam, right? And if we have a beam like this, shear would be going kind of this way instead, right? So how do we look at this? We have to we have to find reactions that are kind of going like this, right? And maybe reactions like this, right? So let's just call this point A, call this point B, all right? And let's just find those reactions, right? The reason why we're doing it tilted is because the beam is tilted and shear force is acting perpendicular to the beam like this, okay? So first thing we want to do, right? is probably break this force up right into perpendicular to the beam and parallel to the beam all right so how do we do that right so we know that this distance is 16 and this distance is 12 right so essentially we know this this is a uh let's draw it here three four five triangle right which essentially means that the the the, um, the ratios for the lengths in the x in the y is um, if you divide it everything by four this length right here would be at five all right so that's uh, just how the uh, simple triangle formula works you can also do this with trig there's no problem I believe it works out to be uh, well let's check right now um, Ten of three over four. What is that? Like thirty something degrees? Yeah, thirty six point eight degrees. Right. You can do this with your calculator. No problem here. The trickiest part is okay. So how do we use this information to split up, split up this force, right? Based on perpendicular and parallel to the beam. Okay. I'll give you a second if you want to figure that one out. Okay. So how we do that is basically okay. Well, we say that um, there is actually this little handy dandy uh, trigonometry kind of, uh, tr you know, shapes we can draw to prove that basically this angle right over here, right? Uh, maybe I'll change the color. This angle is actually equal to this angle up here, right? Because this is a 90 degrees. Okay, and if you have trouble thinking about that, don't worry. The proof is here, right? So let's just imagine we have, we have something here, right? This angle here, right? This is the angle we're trying to solve, here, right? So let me actually just bring that down, so we can have an easier time looking at this. And all you need to remember from a eighth grade trigonometry or something, I don't know when you guys learned it, is that these two angles here and here are similar if these two lines are uh, parallel to each other okay so since this line and this line is parallel we know that this angle and this angle is equal to each other all right now if we look at this triangle right we know that this is a right angle so therefore this this angle would be 180 minus 90 and then minus a right that's all there is left because triangles add up to 180 degrees right and finally if we look at this triangle now right this triangle or actually you know what just this right angle right angle over here right because these two lines are perpendicular to each other right and since this is 90 minus a right this is 90 minus that and that's your remaining angle, which is just equal to A. All right, you don't have to remember that. Just remember, it's this angle. This angle is equal to this angle, right? So how do we use that information? Well, we can, since this is at a ratio of three to four to five, 
we can just simply say that since that is equal to that angle, these are your ratios, right? Um, yep, simple enough, right? So since um, we have we have 40 going this way, right? Uh, we can divide that by 5 because it is going down, right? So 40 divided by 5 is equal to 8, right? Times 4 because that's the ratio, right? And we have 32 kilonewtons acting perpendicular, right? And then, uh, what was that? Uh, 32, 32 times 4, that's 8. So 8, 8 times 3, uh, 3 times 8 is 24 right and that would be equal acting parallel to the beam okay and since this is all being applied directly in the middle don't it, ex ignore how i drew it because this is this is for the sake of drawing the triangle but it's actually a, being applied at dead center and how do we know it's dead center well it's eight from from this point okay so we know that because the reactions are like this right all we need to do is simply divide 32 by 2 because it is symmetrical and we have 16 going here and 16 kilonewtons acting perpendicular to the beam all right that's that's the support reactions but on angle and similarly we have 24 going to this way right um, therefore we should have 12 going to upwards and to the right Okay, now these are less as revel uh, relevant, but uh, you may be um, including a graph later on, all right? And of course, if this is not symmetrical, it can work. You can just uh, do some of uh, some moments to find out, right? Although you might want to just keep it as perpendicular, uh, going straight down the force, okay? So enough about that. Uh, now it should be pretty easy to draw, right? So in this case, when the beam is slanted, let's just draw a shear force and bending moment at an angle, right? Go up 16 because that's your reaction at A. Nothing in between here and here, right? Go down 32. So 16 minus 32, negative 16. And then for the rest of the length, nothing in between and going back to zero, right? And then your bending moment diagram. So 16 times what's the total length of this? Total length of this is 20 right this beam length from here to here is 20 right because that goes back to this 3 4 5 triangle and if you're not sure just use Pythagoras okay so uh, 20 so this is 10 and this is 10 right so simply going up rectangular area 16 times 10 160 going down all the way back to 0 okay because this area is negative Okay, uh, so actually a tricky problem when you first look at it, but once you have the angles down, it's, um, it's quite simple, all right? So for this case, all you have to do is break this down into perpendicular to the beam and parallel to the beam, okay? Just imagine this is a right angle, okay? You have to break the forces down because shear force only acts perpendicular to the beam, okay? Once you have that, uh, break down your reactions, break down your forces, and then simply just solve, right? It's the same as how we've been always doing it, but you're just tilting your head sideways a bit. Okay, so yeah, I I hope that helped, right? And if you found this helpful, that's great. Um, just uh, it all comes down to practice, okay? Uh, there's nothing left for this video. Mm, yeah. I'll see you in the next one, I guess. <laughs> Have a nice day, guys.